Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach. So one of the things that I love about self-publishing is that I can get an idea literally at the last second and talk to the letter and the print file guy and we can just put that in. So I got a, uh, a reference to that. Uh, <coughs> who is that? I forget the name of the uh, author. Do you remember the uh, unsolicited opinions on Israel bit from a few years ago? I was able to get in a reference to that in a Garrison. So that made my whole day. So uh, Runner is, uh, I paid for the printing yesterday. And so that should be getting printed any day now. Uh, Knife Hand Blind Spot with Garrison as the backup. That is being um, print file assembled right now. And then uh, it should be really easy to do uh, the print file for uh, Mind Your Business immediately, <laughs> immediately afterwards. Um, the weird thing is that Runner is done. And I was like, should I just add Runner in with, you know, to the people who backed Knife Hand Blind Spot? I was like, okay, just calm down. You're, you already combined two campaigns. So Runner will just be stored, you know, and then it will go out along with... Um, uh, Jawbreakers uh, Forever. So, speaking of which, Jawbreakers Forever graphic novel. I am Sight Three Impossible Stars Two combo campaign. I uh, I got this amazing you know prescription for cough uh, uh, or no for reflux uh, medicine, but I keep like forgetting to take it every third day because when I don't cough for you know two days, I'm like I I forget that I have the prescription. So feels like it's um <laughs> maybe it's like degree antiperspirant like you know. Have to take it every day. So anyway, uh, I did a community post on this yesterday. And at least on a phone, uh, these two tweets perfectly fit into the square uh, aspect ratio, which I my OCD really appreciated. But I had more thoughts. Unfortunately, while thinking those thoughts, I fell into one of those um, afternoon naps that basically turns you into a crazy person when you wake up. Like you're just so cranky and angry at the world. If I ever became a criminal defense attorney, every single trial would go like this. I'd be like, Your Honor, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, uh, my client had an afternoon nap that went five minutes too long, shortly before you know the events that transpired. Who Who's gonna convict? We've all been in that position. Just angry at like, the world. Just, just the world existing. So anyway. I slept on this and I thought about this some more and uh, I still think this is something that needs to be uh, discussed. So this is Mags Visaggio. Uh, do not contact her uh, for any reason. Just leave her alone. Um, uh, but you know, people often ask, you know, why do you make multiple videos on this person or that person? Well, some people are very much of their time. Uh, they embody the zeitgeist and in some ways they are the zeitgeist. And if you were to name, you know, people that define the last five years of comics, I would absolutely mention Mags, Vida Ayala, and uh, Heather Antos. Um, so uh, <coughs> Mags puts this out yesterday, and it's, it's many things. It's a lot. So she says, two very big contracts are going to close this week. I'm putting that into the universe. These two... Deals will both close and everything will be okay. A year plus of financial distress will vanish. There is so much I'm going to be able to do once money stops being a worry. The downside of being a writer, I work constantly, but payment is unpredictable. So one of the weird things about being a writer is that you always have to check whether, you know, did I come up with that or do I remember that from... A movie I saw when I was in elementary school. And I swear this was from a Kevin Costner movie. But I have typed this like a million different iterations of it. And I've never found it. I, I swear it was like from JFK or something like that. I remember Kevin Costner saying it. And his character said, Lie to the entire world. Lie to God. But don't lie to yourself. And um, this is Mags gaslighting herself or manifesting. So I remember hearing about manifesting like two years ago. Lots of people were talking about it. It was the hot new thing. So I did some research and I was like, 
Yeah, this is wishing. <laughs> you guys are just wishing. I used to wish for things when I was six. You know, you you toss the salt over your shoulder and you make you make your wish, you know, and you wake up the next morning and you know, one of the worst things is occasionally I would wish for something and it would happen, obviously by coincidence. And you know, when you're seven or eight and that happens, you just feel like you have magical powers. Um, but this is, um, it's very sad. Mags has been in this industry for six years, constant work, as she says. Um, but apparently has as much, as much money now at, I don't know, probably pushing 40 as she had as at 20, which is essentially nothing. I mean, her pinned tweet is literally asking people to do online tarot card readings with her for $25. Like, it's a desperate situation. Now, I have terrible news for Max. Absolutely terrible news. And the bad news is that everything she wishes for is going to come true. Uh, because it already has. She's just wishing for things that already happened. Now, let's look at this closely. So she's manifesting that two contracts are going to close this week. That means they are either in negotiations or in final discussions. It also reveals that she needs both of them. Both of them together to have financial stability. Now, <coughs> there is <coughs> turmoil in the market. I guess bonds got hit recently. I don't have any bonds. Uh, but anyway, um, employment is still good. It's still really good, especially in major markets like New York City, where Max lives. Um, the problem is that she's done multiple things. Number one, she created a novelty career with the idea that her novelty will never end. Yes, when she started, there were not very many trans creators in comics. Rachel Pollack, who is, you know, trans and had been working in the early 90s. I don't think she had worked for a while. There was um, Tamara Bon Villain, but she was a colorist. There was, oh, I'm blanking on her name. She draws the Ninja Turtles. She had actually transitioned years earlier. You know, after making a name in the industry under her dead name, she transitioned and nothing happened. Nobody cared. There was no, there wasn't even a speed bump. It was just like, one bleeding cool article and everyone's like, oh, okay, call this person by that name. And uh, then Max came in and made trans her entire identity, her entire career. And it was a novelty for a while. But now there are several trans creators. Um, it is so funny to watch, you know, to get older and watch society change. So one of the things I always look to is normies. And one of the major things on normies uh, or on, <laughs> on TikTok is normies they just found out about SJWs this year. They just found out about cancel culture. They just found out about diversity hires. And the reason they found out is because all those things got to such a crazy amount that even people who are not paying attention are all of a sudden like, um, you know, my normie friends, they know I have this channel, but they never really cared. You know, they're normies. They don't care about comics. Occasionally, they'll ask me, like, you know, should I go see Doctor Strange or what's the deal with Scarlet Witch? But I mean, like, once a year. Like, never before, my normie friends are hitting me up. They're like, um, so why is everyone gay? <laughs> like, and I'm like, what? They're like, you know, my wife, she watches these doctor shows. I don't really watch them, but I'm in the room. And she stopped watching them, and I asked her why. And she said, you know, I just can't connect with any of the storylines. And then, you know, I, you know, wanted to finish the season. Then I noticed, like, hey, everyone's gay in this show. Like, at least half of the people. And some of these, you know, are very long-running shows where these characters are in their 40s and 50s and they've never shown a hint of being gay and now they're all bisexual. And don't even get me started on the new characters. They're all gay. And, yeah, they just went crazy. You know, single-digit percentages of the population are now 50% in some circles. Thor, Love and Thunder... They, like, stopped the entire narrative to make you know, without a shadow of a doubt, that there were four heroes, you know, in the final quest. And don't be mistaken, two of them are gay. 
Um, even though they had to do a retcon on the last movie. Bro, it's the last movie! Um, it's not like five movies ago. It's literally the previous movie. You had to change Korg's entire story. Um, but, uh, so Mag's bet on the idea of having a, you know, uh, essentially a stunt career. Being a novelty. It's like, you know, the thing about novelties is they never wear off. Now, if you want to get in because of your novelty and then prove yourself over time and improve, do it. Do it. I remember years ago, I was saying like, hey, if you are, you know, a minority, if you are from a marginalized group and you think you got hired one time just because of your identity, not really because of your resume, did you take the job or not? Bruh, I got so many responses. Every single person, they're like, fuck yeah, I took the job. It's a job. It was a good job. But then the next sentence was always, and then I proved myself. I've read, I don't know. At one time I had read all the stuff she had published. Right now I probably read half of it. I read Cold Bodies, you know, her latest graphic novel. And it was beyond incompetent. It was funny, like, again, the novelty, the review of Mags back in the day, it was all glowing. And then you go to, like, Goodreads and you read the reviews and everyone's like, what the fuck? I mean, the premise was okay, but, like, she just totally flubbed this entire story. I mean, it's so bad. I wanted to buy copies to give to other people. I, go, I know you're not going to read this. Can I buy it for you so you read this? Because I can't be the only person who read it. Um, but, um, uh, so novelty career never proved themselves, never got better. You still are relying on wishes. Oh boy. You know, if I get that TV deal and I get that deal from, you know, uh, publishing for that YA novel, it's going to fix it. It already happened. You already had all of those things happen. The kindest thing that anyone could do to Max is say, you're cut off. You're done. You're getting no more work. We're not going to piecemeal, you know, two little Rick and Morty short stories to you per year. We're not going to give you that publishing deal. Oh, you got a YA publishing deal in 2018. The book comes out next year. Yeah, like everyone's, there was this, I'm trying to remember it. It was called like Dogfight or something like that. I remember when I first moved to New York City in the fall of 1991. It was this River Phoenix. And it was, it was like set in the 1950s. And it was about soldiers. And the gimmick was you go find an ugly woman. And you bring her to a dance as a joke. But then obviously a soldier does that. And then, you know, he realizes, you know, he used this person. And it wasn't kind. And they, you know, learn about each other. That type of thing. This is just like the first act of that movie. But it's Mags' entire life. Mags gets hired because she's trans. That's it. It's her entire career. It's her entire identity. Every Netflix show has a trans writer on staff, has a trans character. It's nothing special. It's so overloaded that even normies, like complete normies are doing TikToks about like, hey, everyone on my shows are gay out of nowhere. Like, like everyone. Once the normies notice, it's really, you know, um, saturated out there. You never grew. You're a novelty. You are treated like a make-a-wish kid. You know there's a limit for the make-a-wish. When you die of cancer at 32, you just die. You don't go. You don't get to say, "Oh, I wish I could <laughs> go to the end zone with the Dallas Cowboys." They're like, "How old are you?" 32. I'm gonna be dead in like a week. They're like, "Yeah." You just die. Like, no, we don't let you on the field. What, we got to let everyone who dies on the field? I remember, um, I forget, it was one of the Star Wars movies. And there was a Star Wars fan. He was literally in a hospice. And he's like, <coughs> I'm going to be dead in a week. Can I see, like, the review copy of the movie? And, like, Lucasfilm had to, like, think about it. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Like, if you... If he pirates it and then he dies, we can't even sue him. Like, what do we do? So finally they did. But, you know, it was very much, you know, like, hey, we got our eye. Oh, he's dead. But, um, like, what did you think? Now, here's the deal. Everything you want, everything you're asking for, it's going to happen. You're going to get another 
TV deal, probably streaming this time. You're, co- you're going to continue to get dribs and drabs of a not even part-time career. I've been saying this for years, hoping you do a couple things. Get better or leave. And you didn't do either one. I would say you, from cold bodies, you are worse than ever. That was uh, a work of complete arrogance and incompetence. It was someone who is privileged and knows that they will not be edited in any way, so just turn in anything. So you're going to continue. It reminds me, like, imagine if there was a parole hearing, and they're like, you know, oh, you know, you were sentenced to 20 years, but this is uh, 15 years, and you're up for parole, and, you know, what would you like to say? You know, how have you redeemed yourself? And the prisoner is like, you know, I'm going to stop you right there. Can I get 15 more years? Um, you know, sir, this, this is not standard. We don't have... There's nobody asked to repeat their entire sentence. You know what I mean? Like this is this is torture. The comic book industry, Hollywood, is torturing Max Visaggio, and Max Visaggio is participating in it. The kindest thing for everyone is to say, Max, there are literally tens of thousands of office jobs in the New York City area. You don't even have to work in a factory. You don't even have to work in food service. There are so many jobs where you can walk in and they will train you. 80,000, 100,000, 120,000. You're on Twitter all day long. You obviously like technology. And that's the other thing. Max has lived on Twitter for six years. She never talks about comics. She talks about being trans. She talks about Star Trek. She talks about Kurt Cobain. Well, her friend Heather Antos writes or edits Star Trek comics, and she's obviously not giving her any work, probably because Mag's behavior and low sales have gotten her blacklisted at a lot of places, so the Star Trek thing will not happen. Kurt Cobain, you know, maybe you want to write a graphic novel about him. You have a theory that he's trans, go write that book. You seem interested in that. Go work at some sort of center with other, you know, trans people. But for whatever reason, you decided... That comics was this lottery. And I know five, ten years ago, there was constant stories in Bleeding Cool about, oh, this book, and, you know, it hasn't even come out, and this studio is making a movie, and it's just, oh, it's just lottery after lottery. You just, you know, you just Mark Millar and, and you know, uh, Robert Kirkman. You know, yeah, just, no, no. It's like five people who have made a solid fortune out of Hollywood going from freaking comics. You didn't make a... And all those people who were super successful in Hollywood... They became millionaires in comics. That's why Hollywood was attracted to them. What, like, what are you going to negotiate for? They're going to do their due diligence. They're going to see your TV show was canceled at episode three. They're going to see your pinned tweet. Is you doing online tarot card readings for $25? You're not going to get shit. You can't negotiate for shit. So what is the idea? That you're going to redo your first six years all over again? You're going to do the same shit, but it's going to work out that much better? It's not a slot machine. It's not like the cherries didn't all line up. You got to have talent. You got to have sales. You got to have soft skills. You got to have people skills. You got to have luck. And then the things that you're good at also have to be not have been done to death by other equally or more talented people. I saw this TikTok. It was somewhere, I think it was China. And it was this um, earth mover, I forget what they're called. And it falls off a cliff. And it looks like it's an actual, it doesn't look like it's a fake or anything. And it's just like, how did the, how is this working out in your head when you, you know, you drove on a 30 degree incline next to a cliff? And no, nothing. you, You just thought it would go okay. You thought it would, okay, whatever. Like, this is, 0% chance of success. All this is, is you old being broke at an older age. You can't negotiate based on six years of failure. And it's not going to look good. You know, you had a freaking basic cable TV show. There is no shame in the game in saying, I'm not good at something. I'm going to stop doing this. There are so many venues in life where you can be successful and be happy and you're just, wow. 
It's ridiculous. I got angry for different reasons. I mean, Max has personally attacked me in the past. I, I remember one. It was very weird. Where, uh, I don't know, she got some deal and she was very high off of herself. And most likely high as well. And she's like, I'm going to be writing TV shows and uh, comics forever. And it's like, you are. You actually are. And, and that's what's sad about it. Um, because it's just going to be the last six years of failure, but you're going to be six years older the next time, and then 12 years older the next time. And Seek life elsewhere, I've been saying. And th but th there's been other people that have totally righted the ship. Aubrey, Audrey Sitterson. You know, if you're in America and you say stuff about 9-11... It's pretty hard to recover from that, but he has. He just stopped making the same old mistakes. He acted different. He acted better. He even got his mainstream career. He's getting published by Dark Horse again. And he said flat out like three years ago, he's like, I screwed up my career. I can All I can do is crowdfunding because nobody else wants me. But you know what? You have a couple of line drives in crowdfunding. And that's the other thing. If you've worked at like every major company... And you've had a TV show, and you're about to have another one, supposedly. Although, as we see, you need both deals to be out of, fi out of financial distress. Go do a crowdfunding campaign. Go to Zoop. Have them run it for you. I mean, we keep being told that you're extremely popular. Prove it. But honestly, all the people in the industry are using you. They're treating you like an object, and just like with Vida Ayala, you are seeking out that treatment. You get angry at me when I talk to you like an equal. You don't want respect, you want fear. You don't want equal treatment, you, have, you want special treatment. I'm the only person talking to you like we're peers, and like we're both human beings. You tried, it didn't work. Because of your privileged status, you are going to get infinite swings at bat. But that's all you're going to get is the same failure. Seek life elsewhere. I'm telling you. This is quite a different video than what I would have recorded, you know, yesterday. But it's a deeply sad situation. But at some point, I'm talking about middle-aged people who have the ability to learn and grow. We saw Aubrey Sitterson do it. I believe he's around the same age as Mags, maybe a little older. And um, it's amazing how when you improve, that when people bring up old shit, almost everyone's like, Man, shut the fuck up. I brought this up in the Marines. You can have someone who's the most piece of shit Marine. They basically just show up for formation with a haircut and a shave for two months and they don't fall out of a PT run. And everyone's ecstatic. They're like, holy shit. You see him? He's sober. This is amazing. And then when someone wants to bring up, you know, some shit, they'd be like, hey, shut the fuck up. That was like two and a half months ago. He's freaking locked on now. Just be happy with that. We would love for you to be a success. But you've been given so many swings at bat. You never come close. You're actively getting worse. And you're completely fucking delusional. Please. Someone in the industry, have some compassion, have some respect for Mags as a human being, and just stop. Just tell her to stop. Say, you're cut off. We're not condoning this anymore. It's nothing but cruelty to you. Anyway, go buy my comics. It's a tough segue to make. Jawbreakers Forever graphic novel. Ironsides 3 and Impossible Stars combo campaign. You don't have to buy both of them together, but if you do, you save 10%. And I'm going to get back to work. Thanks for watching. Bye.